Okay, so I've had a comment on one of my videos that uh, Consta Kang Lineage 18 is out now, which is uh, Android 11.0. Uh, so let's go and have a look. So January the 4th, uh, so it's been a few days. Uh, here's my build of Lineage OS 18.1 for Raspberry Pi, Model 4B, 4, Pi 400, and Compute Module 4. Uh, and it does say that it's USB supported. So I've downloaded the file. Uh, this is a zip file, so basically you click on it and it'll open up another link. Uh, and then you click on that and then it'll open up another link and then you just pick your mirror that you want to download it from. So I just clicked on the first one that was there and that's downloaded a zip file. I'm not sure if I need to unzip it, I'll find that out in a second. So let's close all that down. So I'm running Twister OS and uh, I'm running that from an SSD drive and I'm going to write it to this Kingston 240GB SSD drive. So I've got to plug that in with a SATA cable as well. So I've got two drives plugged in now. Uh, it will pick that up as normal. There you can see it's come up as 240 gig. Let's switch back into screen capture. So I generally use Raspberry Pi Imager as my imager of choice. So let's type in imager and open that up. Choose OS, go down to the bottom, select custom, go to desktop, and you can see 18.1. I've still got 17.1 from my previous video. Oh, it's quite a lot larger there. That's interesting. So let's click on that, hit open, SD card. So you can see here that the dyno mode is uh, USB 2, so this is the device to write to. So let's hit write. That shouldn't take too long because it's SSD writing to an SSD. So we'll come back when that's all done. Yeah, this is taking really no time at all going from a fast device to another fast device. Okay, and that's all done. And you can see here the uh, extra drives that show up because Android uses more partitions than uh, a lot of the Linux distributions. So we'll hit continue, we'll close that down, and we'll open up the Consta Kang blog because there's something you need to do for USB boot. Uh, I covered it in my other video, but just in case it's different on this. Uh, so let's go back, let's close down that. And you can see here if we go through, so a whole list of the things that are working, so audio, three and a half mil USB microphones, Bluetooth speakers. I won't go through the whole list, but there's a load of things supported there. Touchscreen supported, but I did notice uh, it was written that the official display isn't working now. With Android, I've often found people have had issues uh, on certain displays, getting it to boot, maybe just the first boot, but, but getting it to boot. And uh, so my advice has always been try it on a TV or some other display to see if you can get it up and running. So hardware video decoding and encoding is not supported at the moment. Software decoding and encoding does work though. Um, but very importantly, uh, 3D is supported, uh, hardware accelerated graphics. And I found decent performance. It should be no different to the previous Android videos I've done where I've tried out games, but uh, we'll have a look. And it says stock camera app is not working, but many third party camera apps seem to work. So you can see that you need to expand the partition as well, uh, which I use Gparted to do that. Uh, basically, when it writes the operating system, it doesn't use the whole of the space that's there. So you need to use something, a partition manager, to resize that. And I use Gparted just because it's super easy. Here you go. So how to boot from USB device. So let's make this smaller. So we're looking for boot config.txt under boot device. So boot. and config.txt so you can see it here or well, let's just put it just above it so we need dt overlay equals android usb so we're just going to look for that dt overlay there you go so we need to hash this one out so uh, when you put a hash in it, it basically ignores that line and that wasn't a hash obviously the hash on my keyboard oh, i've got to work out which one it is then there you go, so it's number three. So I must be on American keyboard on this. Uh, and then delete the USB one. So basically it's gonna look for USB to, uh, to boot the image from. So let's hit save. And uh, I'm not gonna change anything else at the moment. I'm just gonna get it to boot Android first of all, just to check everything's working. So I'm gonna shut down. So I need to switch over the drive. So Android is on this one, the 240 gig Kingston. So let's unplug that and get rid of that cable. Uh, and now I need to uh, basically switch over. So this is running from the SATA cable. It doesn't matter what, what SATA cable you use, as long as it's compatible. Will it fit in there? Might fit in there. Yeah, just for to make it tidy. So let's boot that up. 
Okay, so that's booted up super quick. Everything seems to be all right. So let's hit next. Agree to the end user license. And the time and date is correct. I generally use a ethernet cable just because it's much simpler. Location, I'm happy with that. I like to use a pin number on Android just because it's easier to get in. So I've got restore from backup option. I haven't got a backup, so I'm just gonna skip and go in fresh and start. And we're up and running as simple as that. Now you'll find if you drag, uh, left click and drag up from the bottom, you get these various options. You can see there's no app store. So I'm gonna see about installing Google apps in it. Okay, so first off we need to enable developer options. So let's slide up from the bottom and uh, click on settings. Go to about tablet, which is right at the bottom. And click build number several times. So build number, keep clicking and you see three steps, two steps, one step. So now we're in developer mode, just put my password in. So let's go back. Also while we're here, there's a special Raspberry Pi advanced settings option, uh, which is under settings system, advanced settings. So let's go back advanced settings here you go so we got all oh, display resolution so I can do 720 that's gonna make a big difference I think to performance audio device HDMI so you can change your audio device there as well uh, I think I might change mine to three and a half mil jack infrared remote power button volume keys maximum CPU frequency Let's go with 2000. I don't know if that actually overclocks it and that's all you have to do. So now we're going to go back to the web browser and we're going to try because it looks like reading down through it, it looks like you can install Google Apps anyway. Uh, and that's all I really want to do, install Google Apps and then I'm up and running. Uh, so uh, it says Bit G Apps had a working Android 11 ARM G Apps package. So let's have a look on there. So if we scroll down, there's some comments at the end and uh, hopefully there'll be a link to G apps. So someone's tried to leave a link, um, but Consta's not doing any unofficial link mirrors. Um, and I won't put a link in my description because that's the sort of thing that gets your YouTube channel taken down. So if I click on that, what's it gonna do? Oh, there's a thread there. Let's try that. Uh, here we go. Uh, in this uh, comment, it looks like that's G apps. Yeah, that looks all right. So let's click on that and hopefully that will download. Download. Yeah, and you can see it's downloaded. You can drag down, uh, left click and drag down from the left hand side of the screen and you can see your downloads there. And I think if I click on it, there you go. So it shows it downloaded. So let's go back home. And at this stage before, I've usually had to change quite a few settings uh, and enable things, but it seems a lot simpler now. All you have to do is pull up from the bottom, select settings, and just start typing recovery. And you'll get this option, advanced restart. So you want to turn that on. Go to home. Press and hold F5. And then go into restart and then select recovery and that will boot you into the recovery menu. When it restarts you'll get a little box down here on the right just swipe it to the right to enable you to go into recovery and then click on install. Now we need to click on download and then double click on the file and then swipe right to confirm the flash. And when that's all finished, hit wipe Dalvik and slide to wipe. Then we can go back and back again and back again and then reboot and then click on system. Okay, so when it restarts, you need to press and hold F5 to shut it down because now we're going to expand that partition to make sure we're using all of the space available on the drive. So I'm back in Twister OS and uh, I've plugged my Android drive in and uh, I'm gonna start up Gparted. So let's type in GP, launch Gparted. And you need to connect to the right drive. So click on this drop down menu and pick the drive that Android is on. 
you're looking for the biggest partition, so in this case 5.12 gigabytes, click on that and right click and resize. And then just drag that slider all the way over to the right. Click resize, click on the tick at the top and then apply. Doesn't take very long at all. There you go, all done. So hit close. Now we can restart with just the Android drive in and uh, we'll be up and running with the partition the right size. So after it restarts, just unlock in the normal way and you'll see that you've got the Play Store there. I've dragged mine onto the main screen so it's easier to find. And when you click on it for the first time, just like any Android device, it'll ask you to log in in the normal way. Okay, so I've installed a game, so Horizon Chase World Tour, because it comes up as a gamepad compatible game. And I'm using my Xbox 360 wireless controller. And it looks like lowering the resolution to 720 made a big difference to gaming because on this game it's definitely smoother than I've seen it before. Uh, it really felt nice and fast to play. So I'll show you a bit of gameplay footage. I might have to cut the audio because there was some background music. Okay, so definitely looking decent and I hope this means that I can also use it on my little portable touchscreen display because I haven't been able to boot Android on it before, but now I can pick a separate resolution. I reckon it might work. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.